So in this video, we're just going to introduce the idea of vectors. Now, vectors can be used to describe this sort of thing, but they can equally be used to describe uh, forces. For example, um, if we think of a weight and the way that bears down on the table, well, we don't want to just maybe calculate the weight. We want to work with the force that is bearing down because of the force of gravity, of course. So vectors can be used for that sort of thing. They can be used as well for things such as uh, velocity and acceleration, where again, we don't just want to talk about the speed of this bike. We also want to talk about its direction, where, where it's going, the direction in which it's traveling at the same time as talking about uh, how fast it's going. Um, and if we go back to this diagram again, then what we might want to do here is not just talk about the distance traveled between A and B, but also think about, well, what direction is it going in? And what a vector does beautifully is it tells us in just one uh, kind of quantity, uh, it, it tells us both direction and the size that we call the ma magnitude of the vector. So a vector quantity is something that has both magnitude and direction. It has the the size of it is very important, but it also has direction. Now, how are we going to, just in one kind of value, one quantity, going to um, have those two things operating? Well, the answer is we're going to use two numbers. So we're going to enclose them in uh, to these two numbers in brackets. And from those two numbers, just two numbers, we're going to extract um, both magnitude and direction. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now before we look at something like this, let's remember where we might have come across this before. Uh, if uh, you, you've done things like you know, reflection and enlargement, transformations in other words, then you would have also come across, uh, across translation. Now with translation, if I'm translating this shape here um, to this position here, so I've translated it along a bit and down a bit, um, very often we we describe that translation, that movement from here to here, uh, in terms of a vector. So in fact, if I write the vector now, you'll see how that works, and it'll probably look familiar to you. So this would be, if I take a single point here, so that point there, and the equivalent point here, we can see more clearly what's happened. It's moved along two, so that's the first number, and it's moved down two. Well, if we take up as being the normal direction, then down is minus two. Now we have what we call a column vector. And this is very often the first format of vector that we come across. As we get into more advanced mathematics, it might be write, written horizontally, so just like a coordinate. Um, and there are various other ways of writing it. But basically, we need two numbers. The first number is uh, the number that we go along. And the second number describes the number we go either up, or in this case, the number that we go down. So you have two numbers in a vector. And we call this a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's draw an arrow between these two points. So if I call this point A and this point B, and we draw an arrow between them, then this is a visualization of that vector. And in fact, we can move that vector any way we want. I'll just move it down here for the moment, because it applies not just to these points here, but to the whole shape. So let's just rewrite our capital letters A and B. And this is a this is the normal visualization of you know what does a vector look like? It looks like this. It's an arrow. It's joining two points. And not only is it joining two points, it's also joining two points in order. So it's saying we go from here to here. So it wouldn't be the same if we went from B to A. In fact, we can calculate what B to A is. It would be quite different. Uh, so if I write this again, if I say, well, if I've got A to B, and if I use this notation now where I draw an arrow above, then that clearly means A to B. There we go. So A to B in this case is 2 minus 2. But if I draw it the other way, so if I just, if I, if I 
redraw it here a bit roughly there we go and usually actually I put my arrow in the middle there just because it gets in the way it, it, it gets in the way less sorry okay so A to B now B to A we would write like this B to A and of course that would be going in the opposite direction so it's going to be minus 2 now and 2 up so we've got 2 up minus 2 2 up so you can see that this has become negative and the second number has become positive as we've gone in the opposite direction and that begins to suggest a certain kind of algebra in fact what I'm going to do now is introduce another kind of notation and say well let's label the vector itself using a, a normal algebraic letter so a lowercase uh, a just to start us off here and if I I mean one thing I do have to do is 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 make sure this isn't confused now with an ordinary number because this this is a vector this has not only magnitude which we would call a scalar quantity so a scalar quantity only has magnitude it just has size basically but if it's a vector it has direction as well so I need to uh, what the convention is if we're printing it in fact is I need to bold it I can underline it that would uh, symbolize that it's bold as well and it's not an ordinary scalar quantity but a vector quantity usually we would just put a line at the top there like that so that means vector a so now if I write this down here vector a uh, another format for vectors let's just put that line a little bit neater over the top there uh, is actually describing what happens so if I go two along I would say that's two unit vectors and a unit vector conventionally we describe as I the one that goes along in fact we describe as I but again I have to put something over here generally do a hat but you can do a straight line if you like but two I means we go along two unit vectors so unit vector is just when you go along one unit so I've gone along 2, so I've written 2i. And then what have I done? I've gone here down 2. So I'm going to write, well, it's down 2, so it's going to be negative. So I'm going to subtract, if you like, minus 2j. OK. And let's describe vector b then. So this would be vector b. So vector b is going to be what happened here we went negative 2 along so I write simply minus 2 I uh, but up 2 so it's now plus 2 J so there we are uh, now that's just another kind of notation another way of thinking about vectors and it's something we'll use later on but for the moment, let's just stick to this column vector notation, which we're probably most familiar with. They mean exactly the same thing. It's just uh, that sometimes it's more convenient working in this way and thinking about it in terms of I's and J's. Uh, when we're working geometrically, it's usually more convenient to work with this uh, column vector notation. OK, so now let's think about this in a little bit more detail. What have we got in a vector? We've got magnitude and direction. Let's just think about magnitude to start with. Uh, let's write this here. Okay, so magnitude. Magnitude. Magnitude simply means size. Sometimes we call it the modulus of the vector. Um, but what it means is how long is this arrow? Okay, so how long is this arrow? What's the magnitude of the vector? Well, very easy to calculate. Um, and what we do is we use Pythagoras. Now, just to explain how that works, let's just draw the vector out again here. So if I think of this as the starting point, and here then is the finishing point, what have we done? We've gone along in a positive direction to here, and then we've turned. 90 degrees so in other words there's a right angle and then we've gone down to our the tail of our vector if you like 
um, our end point. So here's, let's write the letters in. Here's A, here's B. And so we've gone along two. So that's the length there. We've gone along two here. If all I'm asking now is what's the distance here of this vector. So if I draw my vector here, put my arrow in. I'm not interested in the direction anymore. I'm just unpacking my vector to ask about the magnitude. Well, the magnitude is the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. And I've got two other side lengths. So I can use Pythagoras to find the third side, which is the hypotenuse. And if we remember our Pythagoras, we can we can use um, we can square the two uh, smaller sides, add them together. So the sum of the two squares here will give us uh, the square on the hypotenuse. So we square root that, and we get the size of this line here. And I'm sure you're familiar with that from Pythagoras. So the Pythagorean theorem, we can write in vector analysis like this. So here's our vector, A, with a symbol over the top to make, make it clear that it is a vector. But now what we're doing is kind of unpacking it. We're just saying we're not interested in the direction. We're going to look at the magnitude. So we put two lines either side, and that just says the magnitude of vector A. OK, so the magnitude of vector A is, by Pythagoras, the square root of the two sides. 2 squared plus 2 squared. But say that we didn't have um, a nice little diagram here, or we just wanted to save a little bit of time. Well, we could simply take the second value here, which happens to be negative, and plug that in in the same sort of way. And I'll show you how. If I just rub out this 2 squared here, and simply plug in this number here, so that would be minus 2, and square it. And that squaring is going to cancel those negatives because minus 2 times minus 2 is going to be 4. It's the same as 2 times 2. So uh, I can simply plug in my values. I don't need to, in the end, when, when I get used to this, I don't need to worry about the diagram. OK, so now I've got this square root of 2 squared. Well, that's 4 plus minus 2 squared. Again, 4. Give me 8 square root of 8 and that well I can do a couple of things here I can use my calculator here um, I can well let's let's just have a look at the the value on the calculator so if I plug that in it gives me 2.83 that's the three significant figures okay uh, another thing I could have done is keep it in exact form, which is often preferable because what we've got is an estimate here, really. In exact form, what would this be? Well, if I if I understand how to work with thirds, I know that I need to look for a square number underneath the square root sign. And I've got, what have I got? I've got four. So if I pull out my four, then what? once I take it out of the square root sign, it simply becomes two because two squared is four. So my exact form, Serdic answer, is going to be 2 square root of 2, or 2 root 2, like that. So this is keeping my answer in exact or Serdic form, like that. OK, so that's dealt with magnitude of our vector. Let's have a look at the other component of our vector. Um, so in, in this case, what we're going to do is, is not create a, a scalar quantity. We're simply going to ask for the angle, the direction that this is traveling in. And of course, direction is, with a, with a vector like this, pretty easy to calculate um, by very simple trigonometry. Um, in this case, all we need to do is look at it, really. Uh, let's... Let's, let's draw it again. So we've got an A and a B direction. So we've got A to B. 
and I'm going to draw on a another vector here just a unit vector which will draw in this direction here I don't really need to worry about its magnitude but its magnitude will be would be one but the important point here is it's pointing north okay now if I draw the main vector in here okay so to here right across to here then what I'm trying to calculate is the angle here now if I draw a dotted line horizontally across here you can see that this is a right angle so that must be 90 degrees and here we've got 45 degrees so we've got 90 degrees plus 4, 45 degrees and so we've calculated the bearing the bearing in this case is very easy to calculate the bearing of and I'm going to use another notation here um, so if I've got something like this if I've got a sort of geometric problem maybe a sort of navigational problem then I'm going to say it's from A to B my vector from A to B the arrow on the top here uh, equals 90 degrees plus 45 degrees equals 135 degrees and so that's solved that little problem that little problem okay now let's do something a little bit more tricky um, and see how this works for something that th that's not quite so easy to calculate let's first of all start with the vector that we want to look at um, so let's let's call this a uh, actually we're getting confused with too many A's and B's. Let's call this, um, let's just use, um, let's just call it one dot like that. Okay. Uh, so this is problem two dot. Okay. So this time what I'm going to do, let me think, is uh, have a vector like three, two. So three, two. No negatives this time. But again, I want to calculate its magnitude. So the if I call this what what have we used so far? If I call this vector C, so I say C magnitude. Is that clear enough? Okay, C. So the magnitude of C equals square root of uh, well. Again, without the diagram, I should be confident enough to find my magnitude. So I just take my first value here, which is my along value, and I square it. So I've got three squared. Let's write it out as a square to start with. So three squared. And I add my second value. If it was a negative, it wouldn't matter. But it's a positive, so I just write two squared. Okay, so now I've got square root of well 9 plus 4 square root of 13 and it's already in exact form so that is a Serdic answer if I wanted to estimate uh, the value of this then I would say it was well what do I know I know that 3 squared is 9 4 squared is 16 so it's between that so I'd estimate it at 3.5 if I use my calculator it actually gives me an answer of pretty close 3.6 to three significant figures so there's the magnitude of my vector pretty straightforward again just using Pythagoras what about the direction now uh, no, I won't write it like that let's let's write it again using this kind of bearings notation so I've got now hmm, perhaps if I draw it it will be easier so I think I would draw it in this case so I've got a starting point here I'll call that C and I go three along and two up so here we've got D okay and if I draw it's going to be a bit of a wobbly line. Is that a bit wobbly? Let's uh, erase that and have another go. Um, struggling a little bit with a 
hand injury that I've got at the moment. I think that'll have to be good enough. So there's my vector going from C to D. Um, we are going to then think about the direction. Well, if we draw our unit vector on in the northerly direction, so here's our unit direction pointing north, then if we identify the angle here, it's the angle enclosed by these two vectors here that we're trying to calculate. Let's call that angle theta, using the Greek letter theta. Okay. Now, we went along 3, up 2, but it's these sides that we're interested in here because these complete our right angle triangle. Okay. So I hope that's clear. And this side is 3 long and this side is 2. How do we calculate then this angle theta? Well, here's our right angle. If we look at the angle theta, we can see we know 3 and we know 2. Uh, so we're going to use those sides uh, in our trigonometry. So we're going to say we've got an opposite, so the opposite is 3. And we've got an adjacent. And what um, trigonometric ratio do we know that deals with opposites and adjacents? If I think of soka toa, then it's the toa, the T-O-A. In other words, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to write that out. So we've got tangent, or just tan, of theta equals opposite, which is 3 over the adjacent, which is 2. And so we're nearly there. 3 divided by 2, 1 and a half. And to get theta, all I need to do is find the inverse tan. So if you use the inverse tan button on my calculator, I get my bearing is equal to 56 point three degrees to three significant figures. And that sounds reasonable. If that's going along, if that went along two, it would be 45 degrees. If it were, went along three, then the angle is going to open up a little bit more. So 56.3 sounds very much like uh, what it should do. And so I'm going to say that is correct. OK, now just to finish this video, let's just think about the angle in between these two vectors that we had. How do we calculate that? Well, pretty straightforward. But the reason I'm going to look at this is because it will also give us a new method, a way, in fact, of checking. Um, what we've got already, if you remember, is uh, we've measured these angles with respect to north. So in this case we had, uh, what was it, 56.3 degrees and here we had uh, 135 degrees. So this was the angle here and then we went when we went all around to here we had 135. Now obviously the angle in between this angle here, let's call it theta, is going to be this minus this. So let's have a go at this. So theta equals 135 minus 56.3. So if we go over to one side here, we've got 135, 56.3. So put a point zero there. Let's just use a straightforward standard algorithm here. Carry one, we've got seven. Need to carry again. So we've got 2, 14, 6, 8, and 5 from 12 is 7. So we've got 78.7 degrees. So theta equals 78.7 degrees. Okay. 
Now there is a way of checking uh, this result. And checking is always a good idea to, to do and you'll see this method uh, quite often mentioned. It's called the dot product and it has a lot of uses. Uh, we're just using it to check this particular result but it basically it's, it's, it's used to find very often it's used to find the angle between two vectors so that's what we're going to use it for here. So the dot product and the dot product is um, well when you kind of multiply the two vectors and you'll do it in this kind of way let me show you so we've got this one was uh, three two let's to keep things nice and easy I'm going to rename this I'm going to call this a now so this is vector a so that was three two and this one we'll call b then and this one was what was it two negative two so there, there are two vectors so without drawing it now if we just had these vectors how would we find uh, the angle between them well if we take the dot product that's three times two so it's the first numbers here multiplied together put that in brackets plus the second two numbers multiplied together so it'd be two times minus two so it's plus two times minus two okay a bit of a laborious way of writing it out normally we do this in our head but that's going to equal obviously six plus minus four in other words six minus four which equals two why is that useful well you can then put that equal to the magnitude of each of the vectors multiplied together so the product of the magnitudes so the magnitude here uh, with the 3 2 if you remember was root 13 so root 13 times uh, the magnitude of this vector here which was 2 root 2 so I'm just going to put times 2 root 2 and all of this times cos of theta that's if you like our formula that we're using for the dot product so the dot product is 2 which equals the magnitude times the other magnitude times cos theta now with a little bit of rearranging I can say cos theta then must equal 2 divided by the product of these two magnitudes so cos theta equals 2 divided by well root 13 times root 2 is going to be root 26 so it's 2 root 26 2 root 26 like that now these twos will cancel rather nicely leaving us with 1 over root 26 and we don't like leaving a third in the denominator so we multiply by root 26 over root 26 giving us root 26 in the numerator and 26 in the denominator now if I plug that into my calculator so if I type in root 26 divided by 26 and then press the inverse cos function I'll end up with theta my angle in between and what I'm hoping it will equal is 78.7 .7 degrees okay let's give it a go so typing it in press the inverse cos sign and I've got good okay so I've got 78 78.7 to three significant figures in degrees so that's provided me with a nice check and also given me a method without diagrams of finding an angle between any two vectors.